Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary from the Node Red Project, here with the release notes for the 3.0 release. In the editor, we've added a right-click context menu in the workspace. This gives you quick access to a lot of the built-in actions in the editor and should help users discover more of the many features that are already available. Picking what options should have been in this menu hasn't been a simple task, so we've had to get the right balance between having the right options there and making it too long and hard to find anything. We've introduced a new special node type called a junction that can make it easier to route wires in the flow. Unlike the various no-op nodes that have been published to the community to help achieve similar results, the junctions are far more compact and less obtrusive in the flow. When you hover over a junction, it expands to show its input and output ports. You can move it by dragging its body or wire it up by clicking and dragging one of its ports, just as you do with nodes. This makes junctions really useful for just organizing your flows that bit better. When hovering over a node name in the debug sidebar, a new tooltip shows the full location of that node. This is useful when you're working with subflows, making it much easier to identify exactly which node generated a message. And you can click on any item in that list to reveal it in the workspace. When searching for things in the editor, a new toolbar in the workspace provides options to quickly jump between the search results. And we've also added some more predefined searches, including the ability to restrict the current search to the current flow. The debug, function and link nodes are now given unique default names when they get added to the workspace. This capability can be added to any other nodes, including contributor nodes, through the onAd function in their definition. We chose just this initial set of our own nodes, as they were the ones that would most benefit from having a name applied without the user having to manually set it each time. We've also added an action to the editor that will apply an appropriate default name to any selected node as long as it doesn't already have a name. We added the Monaco editor component as an alternative to our default editor a year ago. It's proven to be very stable and provides a much richer user experience. Now with this release, we've switched over to Monaco as the default editor. New installs of Node-RED will pick up the change. Existing installs might need to edit their settings file to change the code editor property they'll find there. The ultimate goal is going to be to remove the old editor entirely in next year's 4.0 release. And whilst we talk about the editor, we now try and remember the cursor position whenever you open and close a node's edit dialog, which is super useful for, say, the function node. You don't have to scroll back to where you're working each time you open up the edit dialog. We introduced the welcome tour back in 2.1 as a way to share what's new in a release. And in this release, we've now given you a way to see the previous tours if you need to catch up with what we've been doing. Turning to the runtime, we've introduced the optional ability to run Node-RED without the flows themselves running. We already had safe mode that achieved a similar result, but with this new feature, you can stop and start the flows directly from the editor. And the runtime remembers the state of the flows, so when it restarts, the flows will stay in the same started or stopped state. Now, this feature is not enabled by default. To enable it, you need to add a couple flags to your settings file and check the release blog post for full details. But when it is enabled, you get this new option in the deploy menu. You can click it to stop the flows, and continue editing, edit them and deploy changes. And whilst stopped, inject and debug node buttons that get disabled. And whilst the flows are stopped, you then get a menu option to start them again. We've added a new admin endpoint that returns information about the runtime and the system it's running on. So this can be used to quickly gather information when reporting issues. Within the editor, you can see the information it returns by running the Show System Info action. We've taken great care to ensure it doesn't return anything sensitive, and we realise this might not be something that everyone who embeds Node-RED would want exposed. So for that reason, it can be disabled in the settings file. Again, check the release blog post for details. The runtime has long supported the ability to serve a folder of static content as part of its HTTP handling, useful for static resources on web pages and the like. With this release, you can now specify multiple folders to serve from, and more importantly, specify the HTTP path each folder is served from. We added the link call node in Node-RED 2.1. It lets you create a flow that calls out to a link in node and get a response back. The main limitation was you had to hard code which link in node you wanted it to call. With this release, you can now use message.target to set the name of the link node it should call dynamically, giving much more flexibility.
Another updates to the nodes, we have the template node can now access environment variables directly. The debug node has an option to report how many messages it has received in its status output. And the HTTP request node now allows you to set response headers in its edit dialog rather than having to pass them in as message properties. And those are the highlights for Node-RED 3.0. There are plenty of other bug fixes and minor enhancements throughout the whole editor, runtime, and all the nodes. So it's definitely worth checking out. Thank you to everyone who tried out the betas. I think we've got a much higher quality release this go round for all the great feedback the community has given on, on the work we've been doing. And now's a great time to get involved either on the forum or in Slack. If there's things you'd like to see us develop in the future roadmap, Node-RED 3.1 coming later this year and so on. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the release.